Welcome back to halftime. No Phil Elson today. Drew Barrett, Matty T holding down the fort. About to get to Aaron Torres. Before we uh, bring him on, just want to make sure to tell y'all to keep on sending in those not only uh, date uh, suggestions and things for me and the girlfriend when she gets here tomorrow uh, that we can do for the next week because I'm going to need a lot of ideas. A lot of you are coming in as Eureka Springs is a great place. We actually went to Eureka the first time uh, that she came in, and that's when to it go looks, to the Crescent Hotel. To go to the Crescent Hotel, which she had n- no earthly want to do. Y'all didn't and bring then, any ghosts back, did you? No, I don't think so. I hope so. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe you don't know yet. It, it'd be cool until it wasn't cool. And that, that's the thing with a lot of ghosts. Um, <laughs> the Stacy says, I need to bring her to Madison County Wildlife Relief, Kings River Overlook. Hmm. It's a good idea, Stacy. I'll definitely keep those in mind. And also, fun facts. I want to learn about this great state that I've moved to. Because one of my favorite things about when I lived in Memphis was the fact that I knew a lot of stuff about Memphis. I knew a lot of fun facts. And I would like to continue that that here in Arkansas. So continue to send those data ideas, fun facts, and things that you think I should personally know now that I have lived in the state of Arkansas for a month at 877-377-6963. But without further ado, bring in Aaron Torres from Fox Sports Radio. You can follow him on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres. Aaron, how you doing today? I'm doing well, Drew. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Feeling blessed and lovely, uh, and just thankful that you're uh, able to join us after freshly off of your vacation. Uh, how was uh, you were down in Cancun, right? I was in Cancun. First of all, it's funny. I met a nice couple from Cancun, uh, from Arkansas, in Cancun, and I told them this. So I wish I could help you. Your audience is going to laugh at me for as much as I talk about the Razorbacks and mm. SEC football and all that, SEC basketball. Uh, Arkansas, I've been to about. 46, 45 of the 50 United States. Mm-hmm. And, and, and when I say I've been, like I've, I've driven through, not just like I had a layover in Dallas. Like I've been to probably about 46 states. Arkansas is one of the few I have never really? been to, as, as crazy as that sounds. Yeah, so it's a bunch of random ones, Arkansas. Uh, I forget what else. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I think Wisconsin is one. So I don't think I'll be doing that on the same road trip. But, yeah, so I wish I could give you more help with your Arkansas bucket list, but uh, I myself have not been there as much as one might think. Well, hopefully by the time you do make it down here, I'll be able to give you some advice and tell tell you where you need to go. And one of the biggest stories uh, around the area coming out of Big 12 media days is the penalty, possibly not a penalty, uh, of horns down. Has the Big 12 taken it too far? in your opinion, when it comes to horns down, which is mostly done in good fun. So let me ask you the reverse of that. Have you heard anyone make the argument that this is the right move by the Big Ten, by Big 12, excuse me? Uh, Not really. Well, there you go. There's the answer to your question. No, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, and it's one of these things, right? We see this all the time in sports where, you know, you try to put in a new rule because fill in the blank reason why, and then about a month into the season, two months into the season, you realize this is idiotic, it makes no sense, and it's not really fulfilling the purpose that we thought it would, and those rules generally get phased out. So, you know, I think back to the year in the NFL with the the catch, no catch, nobody knew what a catch was, and yet all these games decided on these weird calls that nobody, again, was, was sure what was a catch and what wasn't. Then all of a sudden in the Super Bowl, they just stopped calling it. And so, you know, I suspect that, you know, unless somebody's really egregious now, Week one, when they play Louisiana, I mean, obviously, look, could, could you see a scenario where you get them called? Of course. But I think once we get to the heart of Big 12 play, I don't think if there's a casual, you know, horns down that anyone's going get, to get a major flag for it as long as it's not a Greek. And you bring up the Louisiana, because obviously starting in non-conference play, have you heard that they're going to, if they're going to try to make this uh, across all conferences that the horns down is just, it, it's a no-go? And if so, does Texas really hold that much power? Well, a lot would say that Texas holds that much power, but um, including Texas fans, certainly. No, you're right. It's a good point. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on what, what the officials would be. So I have no idea. But, yeah, like I said, this is one of the single dumbest things that I have ever heard of, and I don't suspect that it's going to last more than a, than a few weeks before refs stop aggressively calling it. Now, again, if a guy 
you know, does a sack and sprints in the quarterback's, you know, has a sack and sprints in the quarterback's face and throws horns down. I don't know if that's going to be the situation that, you know, that's probably an egregious one, but like I said, I don't think that that much will come of this. Uh, I certainly hope not. I hope that we don't make mountains out of molehills, and that's exactly Agreed. what the Big 12 is doing with this horn down. And besides the horns down and obviously Mike Gundy cutting off the mullet, I, I saw that yesterday. I mean, goodness gracious, what the heck was he thinking? Uh, has anything else really caught your eye out of Big 12 media days? No, not really. You know, I'm geeked up for, for SEC media day next week, and I will not be there. I'll be kind of monitoring from home. Uh, I don't know if you guys will be there or not, but, you know, the Big 12, um, you know, frankly, I think it's like a lot of conferences. I mean, the SEC, what makes it so fascinating is there's always interesting storylines, even when Alabama is the preeminent mm-hmm. and dominant program. And so to me, I, you know, I think what the, the Big 12 needs to do here is find a true rival and a true competitor with Oklahoma. And I will say this year, uh, Iowa State is really good. They basically return everybody off the team that actually did beat Oklahoma in the regular season last year. Uh, you know, they lost to them in the Big 12 championship game. Uh, and then they won the Fiesta Bowl. Maybe it is Texas with Sark. I mean, I think the big thing with the Big 12 this year that's just really interesting to me is what does the Sarkeesian generation look like, right? I mean, I live in L.A. People know that. Um, you know, I, <laughs> I don't think he was necessarily the best fit for that uh, USC job when he got it. Ironically, he got it after uh, some interim head coach had done a really good job in Ed Orgeron. And, uh, you know, uh, USC decided that Ed Orgeron wasn't the right fit. And so I only bring it up to say, you know, I think Stark's grown a lot. He's obviously gone through a ton of personal stuff uh, in his life, much of which happened here in California. Um, and, and, you know, I thought obviously he did a great job going through that, that, you know, Nick Saban boot camp over the last two, three, four years and getting his life back on track. Now, does that mean that he's ready for Texas? Does it mean that all the problems that are inherent to Texas in terms of booster involvement, in terms of, you know, outside voices, outside noise, horns down, eyes of Texas song, which obviously upset quite a bit. Mm. People. I, can he handle all that? I don't know, but I am intrigued to see what he can do in that conference I know they have had a lot of other coaches that were deemed to be the right guy and the right fit, and they didn't work out, Charlie Strong, Tom Herman, et cetera. But I, I'm just curious to see, and I do think that he could potentially be the right fit down the road for the long run. And obviously we're going to get an SEC talk because that's what most people want to want us to – want to hear us talk about obviously here in sec country but one last thing on the big 12 uh what was your reaction to the story uh, out of kansas and the new les miles situation of basically it, the way i read it and the way that it seemed les miles has gone about his business is that if he if he if it was legal for him to give two players a pistol and have them walk off 10 paces be okay he would, corral, he'd be he'd be 100 percent okay with it how did Les Miles get away with this type of stuff for so long? Because it just seems like one more, a different example after another every other week at this point. It's a great question. And obviously, you know, when, when he got fired here and whatever it was, March, April of this past year, you know, I think it was a scenario where, you know, stuff started to come out about his time at LSU, what was covered up, whatever. Um, and, you know, obviously Jeff Long, who obviously Razorbacks fans are very familiar with, um, you know, his, his not necessarily involvement, but the fact that he didn't hire Les Miles, or he did, excuse me, hire Les Miles without vetting him. Mm. Um, you know, so, so obviously, look, Les Miles took the fall. Jeff Long took the fall. Their careers are basically effectively over, as best I can tell. Uh, but the latest story, you know, it was fascinating to me, Drew. I mean, you talk about, and, and maybe this is my naivete, I mean, you know, you have 85 guys in a locker room, everyone's going to be best friends, and everyone is not going to be mm. best friends. I mean, we all played sports. I played high school football. That's the reality of the situation. But, I mean, when you have, uh, you know, two, three players effectively, you know, uh, you know assault and, and, you know, I mean, break into, rob, I mean, commit, this isn't, this isn't hazing. This isn't shoving somebody in a locker room. Locker. This isn't a fist fight in the locker room. This is like criminal activity. Oh, and is. as you said, you know, I, I don't even want to say Les Miles turned a blind eye to it because that would imply he did nothing. <laughs> he basically did exactly what you did. He, he met with everybody and he said, I want you guys to apologize and nobody would apologize. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I feel bad for the kid. Um, you know, it's it, it's amazing to me that in 2021, and I know this didn't happen in 2021, but the last two, three years, whenever this did mm-hmm. go down, um, that it would be allowed and, and you know, uh, tried to be brushed under the rug. I mean, we just live in a world where you can't hide this kind of stuff. 
And so, you know, like I said, I think Les Miles is a football coach. His career is effectively over. Is his legacy tarnished? I don't know. You know, I mean, his, you know, his, for lack of a better term, you know, last four or five years at LSU weren't that good. And obviously things weren't trending correctly at, at Kansas. You know, he'll always be remembered, I think, fondly for the early years at LSU, the hat, the mad hat, or all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think his career is over, and this is definitely a black guy, let alone everything that happened towards the end of his time at LSU as well. It definitely is. We're speaking with Aaron Torres of Fox Sports Radio. Follow him on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres. Now, Aaron, SEC Media Days does start Monday. What are the um, big questions? burning and desirable questions that you're wanting to hopefully get answered uh, out of SEC media days? Well, you know, my whole thing, <laughs> excuse me, Drew, my whole thing, you know, I'm not a big media day guy because I don't think anything really interesting comes out of them. Um, you know, Johnny Man, I always say the last really interesting thing that I remember from media days was Johnny Manziel, the year that he got, you know, caught signing autographs. And that was like the first mm-hmm. time that he spoke. That was 2013, I believe. That was almost a decade ago. But, you know, I think the, the interesting questions to me and the SEC are the same ones that are interesting to everybody is a couple things. You know, I think one, I think it'll just be fun to see some of those characters that we didn't get to see last year, Mike Leach, Lane Kiffin, even Coach Pittman, who we know has a personality to him. Uh, I, I think it'll be fun to see them just on the podium taking questions, taking in the insanity of them all. Uh, insanity of it all and then two you know i think the questions that that i have about the sec are the same as what everybody has about the sec alabama lost a ton off last year's team which you know in in tuscaloosa they're arguing is the greatest of all time i don't know that i agree with that but you know they they lose a a heisman trophy winning wide receiver they lose a first round quarterback they lose oh by the way their offensive coordinator steve sarkeesian to texas as we just discussed and Mm so do they bounce back how does nick saban feel about his team but then in general, is it Georgia's like like Georgia like this is go time for Georgia? Like if Georgia doesn't do it this year, yes, I agree, and I think that's probably the biggest question in SEC country. That you know, I do these interviews all over, Drew. I know you know that. I know mm-hmm. your audience knows that. But that's the biggest question right now in Tuscaloosa. That's the biggest question right now in Baton Rouge. That's the biggest question right now in in, in you know Athens, certainly Gainesville, et cetera. Is like if Georgia doesn't do it this year, I don't know that they ever will. So. That one, obviously, A and M. It was funny they they had the A and M replays on the SEC Network last night. I was watching a little bit of those. You forget how good that team was, and they basically return everybody except for Kellen Mond. And so you wonder, you know, uh, is this a year where they get into that fourteen playoff after being number five last year? So I think in general, those are the big things. But but man, it's just crazy. One, how quickly it came up, and and, and two, how many interesting storylines. You know, you just asked me about the Big Twelve. It's hard to piece together. You know, two, three interesting storylines outside of Oklahoma, maybe Texas, maybe Iowa State. I think there's, you know, frankly, I'm not even exaggerating, two or three interesting storylines for just about every team that Mm -hmm. is going to be at SEC Media Day next week uh, down there in uh, Birmingham. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of questions hopefully getting answered, and uh, hopefully we'll be smarter this time next week than we are today. Aaron, I appreciate you joining us, and we'll talk to you next week. Drew, thank you for having me, brother. We'll speak to you, and we'll have a plenty to talk about next week. Thank you, man. I'm sure we will. Take it easy. Aaron Torres from Fox Sports Radio. Follow him on Twitter at Aaron underscore Torres. One thing that Aaron and definitely needs to do when he gets uh, finally over here to the natural state and something that you can do tonight with this crummy weather while it's raining you need to go to 906 Cocktail and Cigar Lounges. They are back. They've got new hours Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m. to midnight Friday and Saturday, 4 to 1. Music, it has returned at 906. And tonight, they've got the Fu- 906 Fusion Band, which is a fusion of jazz and rock and roll, a wailing guitar with some smooth jazz underneath. Sounds like a great, great night. They'll be on from 8 to midnight. So make sure you get to 906 cocktail and cigar lounge and be sure to check out their new food menu from the kitchen as well as some old favorites uh wings sandwiches and all the great sides at 906 cocktail and cigar lounge